Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hello, good to see you guys. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. See you. I love black girl nerds, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Justice, I want to start with you. You know, your character goes through this emotional roller coaster throughout his journey in the film, which we're along the ride with him. Um, and one of the things I notice is his character has some insecurity issues and he lacks self-confidence. Is ultimately those things what holds him back from what he desires? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that he... He feels that discomfort, he feels it palpably, and I think that he's doing everything in his power to not feel that, but uh, ironically, it's sending him in this vicious cycle of enabling uh, people to treat him that way and, and thus creating more discomfort. Um, and I think when he uh, learns how to hone it in, in terms of the society, he feels like a level, level of empowerment. He's like, oh, well, maybe I can use this to make some money and I can use this to like have a purpose. and but ultimately learns that that's unsustainable, that he, he has to do some real soul searching and and uh, create some boundaries in his life and, and stand up for himself, prioritize himself. Yeah, and that soul searching is definitely a key part of what we find out about his journey throughout the film. Um, Kobe, to you, I remember I was at Sundance and screened it there, and I remember at the Q&A during the premiere, you had mentioned that Justice looked like a younger version of yourself. <laughs> And, it's and true. Was, yeah, I mean, you guys do favor. Um, as you were crafting together this script, did you insert younger parts of yourself into this story? Yeah, for for sure. I mean, I think it's um, you know this. It's a more extreme version of the journey than than I went on, partially because of the magic, partially because of how um, you know cowed um, Justice's character is at the beginning of the film. Um, but yeah, when you know, when I was a younger man, I was definitely I, I took up less space. I was much less comfortable, um, you know, in um, in in my own skin. And and I do think part of that story is is race and the thousand little cuts and things like the magical Negro movies living in the background of my mind, telling me that I should be a supporting character in, instead of the lead. And and I like to think that a younger version of myself would have really. Um, uh, benefited from seeing a movie like this and, and Ben, I, I, I'd like to hope a little more uh, emboldened by it. <clears throat> Back to you, Justice. I, I love the idea of black people forming their own secret society. And there are real secret societies. Um, why do you think that these kind of societies are formed? Oh, I, wait, are there real secret societies? Well, I, I, well I know the Illuminati because I mean, like smart. the Freemasons <laughs> yeah. and the um, Illuminati. Yeah, the Illuminati, which I'm a part of. Um, <laughs> no, uh, what's well, it's the like? I think, well, I think for, I don't know for, what that is. For, I think for black, like, uh, there's obviously like a, there's a real power in solidarity and just in independent of like secret societies of just you know black people coming together and being in a group and and even just as an ensemble sharing our experiences, like you know, Justice and I talking about our own sort of, mm -hmm. you know, traumas around this stuff and our own experiences with this stuff. There's a power in that kind of solidarity, you know. I think and, also black and, people, yeah. we're all about community, you know, we're all about helping each other through whatever. Yeah. And this is kind of turns it on its head, you know, it's like <laughs> black people helping each other to yeah. like yeah. help white people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, but but I think with that, that you know, a lot of the the imagery around, you know, Freemasons and these secret societies is that, oh, this is the real power behind everything, right? Even though those are, those are conspiracy theories, but it's, yeah. you know, there's there's this fantasy that there is like a secret group that's really running everything. And to me as a black person, like the secret, the secret thing powering America is racism, right? Like that's, right. The, that's the secret sauce in here that, that we don't acknowledge economically, that we don't acknowledge in terms of our political history in certain cases, right? And so as a metaphor for that sort of world beneath our world, you know, a group of black people who are, in their way, aiding and abetting systemic racism by just helping white people every day, right? That's that's a satire. Um, that that I think is a really sort of tidy metaphor because it's not it's not some secret group of masons. It's you know a, a, a history of enslaved people and a bunch of other things. That's mm. part of what the the dark underbelly of America is. Well, thank you so much. And in case someone wants to clip this, Justice, you are not a part of the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why'd you put that on me? You know. Jamie Broadnax, Black Girl Nerds.
Hi, Hi David. Girl. How you doing? Hi, black girl nerd. I was a nerd, too. <laughs> I didn't think I was when I was a kid. I thought I was cool, but I've been informed that I was a nerd. Okay. Nerds are cool now, so you're good. You're in good company. <laughs> we call them blurds. We were black nerds. Blurds. Blurred is the word. We're yeah. we're a big community now, indeed. Yes. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. You know, I saw this at Sundance, and I saw you on the Q and A talking about working with Kobe in this film, mm -hmm. and how at first you were a little hesitant working with a first time director. Um, but then through this journey, you know, it was a re very refreshing thing for you. So now that you've worked with Kobe, what are your feelings towards working with first time directors? Um, I like it. I think I said, I don't know if I said this when you, I, when you saw me, but especially at this point in my career, one of the things I like to do when I work with a first, first time director, first time black creative, is I want to show them my professionalism and and how a set should be run. And that's not by saying, oh, you're not doing it right. Take off your glasses when you address your cast. No, I do that in how I wow. respond to okay. them and the respect that I give them. You know what I mean? Now, after that's done, it's just... Uh, I, I'm there as an actor to bring the director, the, the writer's vision into focus. You know, the, the, the greatest thing that happens to me when I come on a set is I just get to act. So I don't have to sit there and say, oh, you didn't write this script right. Um, my character is not fully drawn. Uh, can we change this? No, man, no. So So I didn't have to do that here. And that's a tribute to Kobe, the way this piece was written and the way he was directing. The best thing I could tell him and the most encouraging thing I could tell him is he always said, David, you can change this, you can say whatever you want. I was like, Kobe, this is really beautifully written. I don't have to change anything. Let's just shoot it, you know? That's how I really felt. But also in doing that, uh, hopefully I'm giving him confidence. This is your show, you're the director, direct. That's the first thing I said, direct me. You don't have to, you know, yeah. or else we're going to be here all day when you're like, ah, ah, tell me if it stunk, tell me to be bigger, smaller, you know, that kind of stuff. So it was cool. You, I, I love it. I love it. that, And he's probably a more confident director because of it. Because of me. Because of you. And indeed. And, and because of you, I love the fact that you balance comedy and drama so well, which we see in mm. this film. And people know you mostly from your comedy, but you're a great dramatic performer. We've seen that this past year with The Color Purple. Is there a skill to being able to craft the art of balancing comedy with drama? Um, it is a skill. It is a talent. Not everyone can do it. But, you know, as a kid, uh, the people I was really admired, I remember watching Jackie Gleason. You know, as a little kid, he was a broad comedian. But then watching him in The Hustler play Minnesota Fats, which was deadly serious, and he was so good, so amazing and awesome. Robin Williams was another one of my heroes. Richard Pryor, all these performers were hilarious. Richard Pryor was an amazing, dramatic actor. And had he lived another life, if I could have been you know, nudging him, I would have said, man, do some, do a serious thing. Do a, do a serious role. Uh, I remember when I saw him in Blue Collar, it was, it was funny, but it was very serious and heartfelt. So those were the kind of guys that I try to emulate, especially as I get older, you know. Yeah. Well, David, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. I loved your performance in this, and I can't wait for everybody else to see it. Thank you. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds.